Are you constantly checking your phone, hoping for a message that never comes? That aching feeling when every song, place or joke reminds you of them. If that sounds familiar, stay tuned because today I'm going to reveal six signs that you might be too obsessed with someone for your own good and how to stop. And at the end of this video, I reveal a simple change, one simple change that could, could transform your emotional world forever. Hello and welcome back to Couch Psychology, Life and Love Explained. I'm here today to talk about a topic that touches many, yet is seldom spoken about openly. The intense, sometimes unrequited, obsession we can feel for someone. It's natural to feel strongly about someone, but what happens when it goes beyond love, becoming an obsession that consumes your thoughts and daily life? Many of us have been there, feeling as though our happiness hinges on one other person's affection and presence. Whether it's constantly checking for notifications or overanalyzing every interaction or struggling to enjoy our usual activities because our mind is elsewhere. These signs of obsession can take a toll on both our mental and emotional well-being. So today we'll explore why we become obsessed, how it affects us and most importantly the steps we can take to regain control of our lives and find a balance. We'll use real world examples and popular psychological concepts to unpack why these feelings emerge and how to handle them. From understanding our triggers to reshaping our emotional responses, the goal is to empower you with the knowledge and tools to transform this obsession into a healthier, more sustainable form of love. So if you're ready to start this journey, let's lean in and get started. So let's begin with understanding attachment styles. Attachment theory tells us that our early relationships with caregivers form blueprints for how we perceive and behave in adult relationships. These blueprints are known as attachment styles. Secure, anxious, avoidant, and disorganized. And when obsessed, many of us exhibit traits of an anxious attachment style where there is an intense fear of losing the object of our affection. This fear can manifest as constant texting, overthinking interactions, or even paranoia about their affections waning. It's your truth talking, fear of abandonment, driven by deep-seated insecurities from past experiences. To address this, start by identifying your attachment style through introspection or, or, or with a therapist. Recognize situations that trigger your anxiety and gradually challenge these fears by building healthier thought patterns and behaviors. Realize that while it's normal to desire closeness, true affection allows space and trust. Next, the role of idealization. Idealization is a psychological lens that magnifies someone's positive traits and minimizes their flaws, which can fuel our obsessions. This often occurs when we place our person on a pedestal, making them irreplaceable and perfect. However, this is a distorted view, not grounded in reality, and sets the stage for emotional turmoil when the idealized image clashes with their true self. To combat idealization, start by writing down a balanced view of the person. List their strengths and their weaknesses and reflect on how these attributes actually impact your day-to-day -day life. Engage in conversations with trusted friends who can offer a more objective perspective. This exercise isn't about criticism, but about seeing your person as a real flawed individual, as we all are, not just an idealized concept. This more grounded approach can significantly reduce 
obsessive thoughts and bring you closer to a realistic understanding of your relationship. Number three, recognizing unmet needs. Often our obsession with someone signals unmet emotional needs within ourselves, be it love, security, validation, or attention. Recognizing and acknowledging these needs can be transformative. Ask yourself, what am I really seeking from this person? Is it something I feel is lacking in my own life? Start addressing these needs independently. If you seek validation, find ways to affirm yourself. Engage in activities that boost your self-esteem and contribute positively to your identity. This might involve developing new skills, volunteering or simply spending more time on your hobbies. As you begin to fulfill these needs yourself, the obsessive need for the other person to fill them will diminish, leading to a healthier, more balanced emotional state. The power of distraction. Distracting yourself can be a powerful tool to combat obsession. The goal here isn't to avoid dealing with your feelings, but to give your mind a break and allow it to focus on positive, fulfilling activities. Start by exploring new interests or revisiting old hobbies that you've neglected, whether it's painting, hiking, or learning a new instrument. Engaging in these activities provides a sense of accomplishment and joy that isn't tied to your romantic interest. Incorporate these activities into your routine, ensuring that each day includes time away from thoughts about the person you're obsessed with. Over time, this balance will help reduce the intensity of your obsession, giving you a clearer perspective and allowing your emotions to stabilize. But let's talk about setting boundaries. Setting boundaries is essential for emotional health, especially when you find yourself obsessing over someone. These boundaries should focus on limiting the time and the energy spent thinking about, interacting with, and even discussing the person of your obsession. Decide on limits that feel appropriate, such as not checking their social media, or, or, or only allowing yourself to think about them at certain times of the day. I know it sounds hard, but it's, it's, it's important. Communicate your boundaries to friends and, and family to help maintain them. This might feel challenging, but it's a crucial step towards regaining control over your thoughts and feelings. Over time, these boundaries will help you to detach from your obsessive patterns and foster a sense of independence and self-control. And this is very, very important. Seeking professional help. If your obsession begins to significantly impact your daily life and happiness, it may be time to seek professional help. Psychologists and therapists specialize in helping people understand the roots of their feelings and behaviors. They can provide strategies tailored to your specific situation, which can be more effective than general advice like this. Therapy can offer insights into why you become obsessed and help develop practical approaches to manage these feelings. Whether it's cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, that's CBT, to change uh, thought patterns, or psychotherapy to explore deeper emotional issues, professional guidance can be invaluable. Remember, seeking help is a sign of strength and a step towards emotional well being. Shifting from obsession to a healthy form of love is not just possible. It is empowering. It starts with understanding our own patterns, setting boundaries, and taking proactive steps to address our emotional health. But anyway, remember the change I mentioned at the beginning. It's simply this. The realization that our own well-being is the most profound love affair we'll ever experience. If this video resonated with you, please like, subscribe and share it with someone who might benefit from it. Your engagement helps us grow and continue to bring, bring valuable insights into life and love. 
Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and indeed your experiences.